like it's cloudy because a bunch of people have been in it. You know, there's just some organic waste in there. Busy weekend of swimming, it got cloudy. Enzymes break that stuff down so it doesn't get cloudy. You can use a clarifier. We make two great clarifiers, but those are band-aids. You know, they you have to have a problem and then they kind of fix it. This creates the problem from ever happening. It's perpetually cleaning that water so it stays just crystal clear, right? Breaking down all that stuff. Because no one wants to swim in a pool that looks milky like that. It just doesn't work. Um, also, filter loading. We know what goes in there. Is this mostly a cartridge filter, or sand filter market, or DE, or oh, all of them? Okay. I'm from the Midwest where it's mostly, mostly sand, very little cartridge, some DE. And we've all seen what goes on in these filters, you know. We've all seen the goo that can, that can plug these things up. Um, bottom line, if you're using our enzymes in any form, remember we have them in several different products. It's a technology, not just one product. You'll clean your filters half as often, I guarantee. Because the filters are constantly being cleaned for you. Those enzymes are breaking that stuff down that's hogging up and, 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 and impacting those filters, whether it's sand, DE, or cartridge. If, you, if it's a sand, you'll backwash half as often. That also leads to, you don't have to top off the water, you don't have to shut the pool down, rebalance, it just makes it easy. It's constantly cleaning the water and the filters as well. So you'll notice a big difference there. Also, if you have any indoor facilities and they smell, most of those just aren't ventilated very well. And you go in, it's just like, ugh. Enzymes will cut down that odor significantly. Um, the humidity of these facilities and just poor ventilation, you get a little bit of chlorine gas coming off there, combined chlorine. Enzymes break the stuff down that combines up with chlorine. It's usually the, the urine and the ammonia of the sweat that does that. It'll noticeably make these places smell better. They don't get that kind of uh, irritating uh, odor that's in the air. Also, skin and eye irritation. Pretty common sense. If I get out of a pool with your pee on me in even small amounts, my skin can get irritated. And that's what this is right here. This is spa rash, Pseudomonas folliculitis. It's bacteria from someone else's body that's been released that touches someone else's, another bather in that same body of water, and gets into their pores and infects them. This happens more often than you think. But if this is one of your customers, and they have this, and it's usually females that get it because they wrap a towel around them, and that wet towel stays on their body, and that's how it's transplanted, they're going to be mad at you, you know? So you can avoid that by using enzymes because it breaks down these bacteria and it breaks down the oils and stuff that get introduced. Um, we talked about suntan lotions. They're not water soluble. They float on top there. We've all seen that. Somebody jumps in and just leaves a slick behind. Again, enzymes break that down. But be aware of this. These non-soluble suntan lotions are the main culprit for your scum line ring around the uh, edge of the pool. And nobody likes scrubbing that if you're a service guy. No, I hated it. You know, you go to that pool and just know that, that right above the water line, you just have that goo. What it is, it's, it's a partially oxidized hydrocarbon, which is what these, these suntan lotions are. But bottom line, even your shocks can't break those down, so they kind of burn it up a little bit, and it turns kind of a grayish color. And then you have to sit there and scrub it. Use a cleaner, scrub it. It's, it's, it's not fun. Enzymes break that stuff down before they can adhere to the wall, so you don't have a scum line ring anymore. Also, biofilms. I don't know if you've heard much about these lately. These are kind of the new boogeyman of the industry. Um, it's the new bad guy. This is biofilm. It's the same makeup as plaque that grows on our teeth. If you get a, a hard surface and any kind of moisture, you will get a biofilm. All right? Biofilms are pretty nasty. You don't want them in your system. They just did a big study on them. Bottom line is they grow bacteria. Here's how it happens. Bacteria get introduced from us. We exude like 11 million bacteria every time we get in a pool. So think of them as bad seeds. They find this biofilm, which is like dirt. They plant down in there, and then they grow. So these little seeds get in that nasty biofilm that's in your pipes, and then they grow, and they can get, uh, they can create uh, bacteria that can actually make us sick, um, which is not good. This stuff can clog pipes, too. So enzymes break down that biofilm so you don't have to worry about that. You will hear about this moving forward in the industry because they just did this big study, like I said, and they determined that biofilm is some nasty stuff. Um, this is really why. It's, this is Legionnaire's disease, and they figured out that that's where Legionnaire's comes from, is biofilm. Does anyone know what this is? 
Yeah, the grotto. You heard about the Legionnaires outbreak there. They had this happen and it almost killed four people. So um, they were visiting from Sweden. I don't know if they were guys or girls or whatever the deal was, but evidently they got sick. So that's what it was. It was a Legionnaires disease that came from a biofilm growing in the plumbing there. If they'd been using enzymes, especially ours, they wouldn't have that problem. So. And I hear from good authority that uh, Hugh is actually using the enzymes now. So just when it comes to biofilm, just be aware of it. It can grow bad stuff. Once you start hearing about it, just know if you just use a weekly dose of Pool Perfect or any of our enzyme products, you're knocking that stuff out. And that, with proper sanitizer levels, will prevent any kind of outbreaks of like Legionnaire's disease and things like that. So you've got a weapon in the uh, toolbox for that. So look at it like this when it comes to enzymes. The old way of doing it was throwing a bunch of sanitizer. You shock your pool, do you guys shock once a week usually? Is that recommended out here? Or every so often, as whatever, needed. as needed, okay. Well that's the old way of doing it, you shock to try to burn this stuff out. And it's okay, it's effective I guess. Um, but that was kind of formulated, that, that way of doing it was designed when chlorine was very inexpensive. We all remember those days. It's not inexpensive anymore. So we kind of look at it now as like, do it smarter where you add a very inexpensive, non-toxic product that cleans the water, cleans the filter, cleans the pool itself, so you don't have to, and then you add a lot less chlorine. You actually save money by using all this. Um, and this is where <coughs> the rubber meets the road, to say, because Taylor just did a, a three or four year study where they wanted to determine where your daily chlorine goes. We're not talking about shocking. We're talking about actually where your one to three part per million residual chlorine goes. Where does that stuff, the most important you know, part of the pool is your daily uh, sanitizer level. So this is the, the tablets and the uh, skimmer, your floater, your offline or online chlorinator. Where does this chlorine that's being introduced in low amounts go in the pool? Bottom line, they determined that 90% of this chlorine, the most important one, is prematurely being consumed trying to burn up organics. Chlorine's a dumb molecule. You put a little bit of chlorine into a pool, it floats around, it bumps into something, and it tries to chemically burn it up. That's how it works. All right? It can't tell the difference between uh, Legionnaire's disease and someone's pee. So when someone pees in the pool, a bunch of chlorine goes and tries to attack it. It can't really burn it up. It's insufficient. It's not a high enough level, so it just burns itself up. So you're losing 90% of the chlorine that you're actually putting in a pool because it's prematurely trying to uh, burn up these organic contaminants. So do the math. If you're adding very expensive Pool Perfect once a week or any of its hybrid products and taking out these organics, your chlorine is going to go a lot further. It's going to save you money. So if you have like a feeder, you'll notice you'll turn it way down. If you've got a floater, you don't have to keep four tablets in it, you can keep one or two. And that chlorine is going to stay at that same level because we're taking out all the stuff that burns the chlorine. It's just that easy. Enzymes will clear the way for your sanitizer to do what it's supposed to do, and that's kill disease and bacteria. Pretty simple stuff there. Chlorine is going to be a lot more effective and efficient, and you will use less if you use the enzymes along with it. Plus, you get all the benefits. It's just constantly polishing the pool, the filter, and the water. And you're just going to have great looking water, and your customers are going to love you. Um, again, this is all the stuff it does. I don't need to rehash it. You guys get it, I'm sure. Uh, any questions on enzymes or organic contamination or peeing in pools or anything like that before we move on to phosphates? Nothing? Okay, good. Well, enzymes are good. Um, phosphates. Uh, I'm sure you've kind of been hearing about them. It's, it's becoming more and more uh, of a theme in the industry and people are realizing how detrimental phosphates can be. Um, phosphates on their own are not a bad thing. They're an element. They're here for good reason on Earth. They're number 15 on the periodic table. You know, that's that big thing in science class we all didn't pay attention to. But they're here for, uh, to feed plants. That's why they're on this Earth. Anything green has to absorb phosphates in order to grow. Um, it's a part of photosynthesis. So it's plant food, essentially. Here's the deal, though. That plant food is everywhere. It's an element. So if it gets introduced into a pool by a number of different means that we're going to talk about here, it's a bad thing because it can feed algae. Now, how phosphates will pollute a pool is several different means. Uh, 
dirt, dust, and rain. It's in the environment now. We use phosphate-based fertilizers on massive scales for all the agriculture in America. If it rains, you get some phosphates in your water. It's usually a little bit, and it builds up, and it takes some time to build up, but it will be introduced. Um, also, fertilizers, any of, your, any of your pools on golf courses or if they have a lawn service, um, if it's going to feed or fertilize, you know, whatever they're using, grass, some of that stuff's going to get in the pool, and it will feed or fertilize algae. Um, another thing to keep in mind is phosphates are measured in parts per billion, not parts per million, so a little bit of phosphate pollutes a long way. So your yards, your, uh, your, your customers that have that nice manicured lawn, you know, and have a service, most likely they've got phosphates in the water. Also, a lot of municipal water sources are now uh, using a form of phosphate that actually helps prevent uh, plating and scaling in the pump or in the, uh, in the pipes. However, it is phosphate. It will add algae food to your water. So something is innocent enough is just topping off your swimming pool can actually add algae food. So that's another thing you want to be aware of. And we're going to do a test here because testing is key to see what the water is like here right out of the tap in the kitchen. But believe it or not, most pool chemicals that deal with staining and scaling, not to pick on jacks at all, but a lot of this stuff, good products, it works. They are phosphonic acid based and they will break down into plant food. So they do one job, and they do it pretty good, and they do a pretty good job of it, but they do degrade down from chlorine exposure and UV exposure, and they break down to that element phosphate, and they will contribute. So again, test for yourself. If you're using uh, chelators and sequesters that aren't ours, that are not phosphate based, that are phosphate based, you'll find that you're adding phosphates to your swimming pool. And you don't want to do that. This is uh, phosphoric acid, this product right here, it will add phosphates to a swimming pool. Bottom line. It's doing a job. It's going to clear it up. Uh, it's going to prevent staining and scaling, but it will add phosphates to the pool. And then again, remember, the same type of stuff is being added from your munis municipal water. So we'll do that test here in just a second. But something as innocent as adding a hose and topping off that pool, you're adding phosphates off. So just be aware of what you're dealing with and use the test. Um, things you want to look for when it comes to signs that you have high phosphates are lack of chlorine residual. Phosphates do impact your chlorine levels, all right? Anything over 150 parts per billion will significantly affect chlorine levels. So if you have that pool that just won't keep chlorine, do a phosphate test. I guarantee 80% of the time it's going to have high phosphates. You get them down very easily, boom, the chlorine comes right back in line. Also, chlorine generators, if you have one that's just not keeping up with demand, it's not making chlorine, it's usually because of high phosphates. If you call Zodiac, if you call Goldline, if you call Pentair, and say, I have a chlorine generator, this is not working right, did you check your phosphates? It's going to be the first thing they ask you. Um, it's true. So phosphates and chlorine generators do not like one another. You've really got to maintain that phosphate level to low level in order for that generator to work. Then most importantly, this is the one that uh, is really going to be a red, uh, a red flag that you've got high phosphate levels if you're always getting algae. The higher the phosphate, the worse the bloom is going to be and the more often you're going to get algae. Bottom, bottom line. This is why. Algae needs five things in order to grow. Sun, water, air, nitrate, and phosphate. Those are the five absolutes. If you break one of those out of that cycle, you cannot get algae. I repeat, you cannot get algae. So by taking phosphates out on a weekly basis, like we have the technology to do, what we have to offer you, you cannot get algae because the cycle is broken, and it's guaranteed. It's scientific fact. You have to have a level of phosphate in that water for algae to sell divide or to grow.